France has suffered an absolute tragedy. Um, you know, over four, I believe four people now dead, Samuel Pate murdered mm -hmm. for simply teaching a class on freedom of expression. Yeah. Followed shortly by an attack in Austria, actually. Mm -hmm. You wrote that Emmanuel Macron finds himself now, the French find themselves now very isolated in Europe. Mm -hmm. And you say that this is to our shame. Yeah. What can we do to stand up for our values, to stand up against this very, very worrying evil that we've faced? And how do we resist this idea of a new normal? Because we remember the Paris attacks. We remember when leaders went to Paris after the Paris attacks and stood in the streets with um, Francois Hollande and said, oh, we will not let this happen again. And now they're gone. Now they're gone. And yeah. what do we do as the younger generation to take this challenge on? Let me cite a, a, some surprising sources. First of all, a left-wing writer and secondly, a left-wing word. Firstly, a left-wing writer. During the Satanic Verses controversy in 1989, when the Ayatollah Khomeini threatened or called for the death of a British novelist for the crime of writing a novel, uh, there were writers in America, as there were in Britain, who stood alongside Rushdie. There were also writers who, to their eternal shame, uh, carried out acts of, uh, of vengeance on Rushdie by saying he deserved it, or much more. Susan Sontag, uh, perhaps not somebody people would expect me to cite very much, and a bit of a windbag, self-regarding windbag at her works, nevertheless had one of her great moments uh, and helped organize a reading from the Satanic Verses in New York, in which some of the great writers of the day uh, appeared and read portions of the book. And Susan Sontag then said something which is very important to have now. She said, what we need is a bit of civic courage. We need a bit of civic courage and the left-wing word I wanted to use is one which I wish the right had more of, and that's solidarity. Solidarity is an incredibly important concept. It, it seems not to be something that's quite so natural uh, for a lot of people on the right. Uh, people let, let their own hang rather too often in my, in my experience and uh, sight. Um, but solidarity is one of the great ideas, of the, the great, great principles of the left. And I, I am particularly for it in cases like this with France. I want a bit of civic courage and I want a bit of solidarity. Uh, I'm actually just writing a piece at the moment for one of the French papers, expressing my own admiration that I've been writing about elsewhere in recent weeks uh, for the Republic. I think that if you, if you took almost any other society and saw multiple attacks of this kind, we've had attacks in Britain, well, of course, have attacks almost everywhere. But if you took the, um, uh, what happened in 2015, the year starts with the murder of all the most prominent secularists in France, and it finishes with the slaughter of a priest at the altar of his church in Rouen, as he's saying mass. That's a pretty total assault on a nation, uh, just, just there. And it's just happened again last month from Samuel Paty to the three people ha hacked at, indeed decapitated as they're leaving church in Nice. Now, I don't think any other country I can think of would, 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 would have borne this, would have been able to go through this without very unpleasant things happening as a result, very ugly events. Uh, and France has, and I enormously admire the uh, French Republic for this. It doesn't stick in my throat at all to, to say that and to credit it. And I think it needs to be said more often uh, and with more love and more, more, um, more solidarity. Um, and I would just add to that that if there is a reason why it seems to be hard, it is because of something that's gone wrong on the American left. I'm delighted that Emmanuel Macron has written to the Financial Times and actually phoned the New York Times, two distinguished former papers, and told them why and how they've got his country wrong. I want more of this. It's the American left that's gone rotten. The American left has gone rotten. The French left can do all the leftist stuff. It can do, do all the trade union organizing, and it can still love its country. It's the American left that has increasingly been thinking that to be on the left is to loathe your country, to be ashamed of it. And so this, this terrible 
putrid thing on the American left has spilled out elsewhere and has made the American left think that even when the French Republic is defending itself on left-wing terms, that it is in some way racist and much more. Well, this is their damn problem. It's not the problem of France. And I'm delighted that Emmanuel Macron is standing up. And I'm delighted and, and, and emboldened by the fact that he's not the only one. Emmanuel Valls, when he was prime minister, was just as strong on this. Uh, I, I admire them, I salute them. I think they need a bit more, more encouragement and, and love. And if you can't show love for France, then, then uh, you can't show love for anything. So um, yeah, a bit more of it. And I, and I love it from Boris Johnson, but he seems, he seems to be uh, um, distracted. I can understand why, but everything's always going on. It's no, uh, it's, it's a, he missed an important moment to show solidarity, but then so did Chancellor Merkel. So yeah, I wish they hadn't, but. Do you think that one argument that could be used is pointing out the very obvious fact that someone like, a, a, you know, a rabble rouser like Mr. Erdogan, right, you know, Sultan of Turkey, will condemn France and say that Emmanuel, uh, sorry, that um, President Macron is, you know, deluded, but has, you know, said absolutely next to nothing about the fact that Uyghur Muslims are being mm. shipped into camps, yeah, yeah, yeah. their body parts used mm. for, you know, trade effectively, their hair and so forth. I mean, surely this obvious fact would, would help us understand that these groups are just, you know, self-serving, mm, mm. nasty liars. Um, yeah, you know, everybody who, um, everybody who studies Middle Eastern politics or the uh, um, Islamic world at university still, I find, rather shockingly, has to read the, um, uh, the Edward Said book on Orientalism. And it's, uh, there's so, I mean, so many destructions of that book now by my friend Ibn Warak and, and others. I mean, it is, I'm surprised it's still standing as a book. But you hear it trotted out by these, um, these uh, particularly undergraduates who think they know everything uh, because they've imbibed a little bit of Said. But I mean, there is, there is an interesting version of it that goes of what he's trying to talk about, which goes on in our own day, which is the presumption, the extraordinary presumption uh, 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 that people like Mr. Erdogan actually mean what they say. It's the same thing with Imran Khan, the um, former cricketer and playboy, and now the Prime Minister of Pakistan, who, who pretends he's some stern-faced mullah. He's a double-faced little toad. He's an appalling piece of work. I, I, I loathe Imran Khan's behaviour. I was at a conference with him once in uh, Delhi, where the, uh, the Indian interviewer absolutely eviscerated Imran Khan, quite rightly, by saying, which Mr Khan have we got today? Um, uh, but, you know, here is Imran Khan, total playboy, uh, doesn't believe a word of it, but needs to, needs, to, needs to rally people in a country whose economy he can't improve, and the living standards of the people in which are miserable in the majority. And here's this man who then vies for some kind of leadership by insulting France and lying about France. And then you have Mr. Erdogan, who's simply another person auditioning to be the leader of the world's Muslims, as he sees it, the great caliph. Uh, um, there's Mr. Erdogan just making stuff up about France, lying about France. It's not that they're mishearing. It's not that they, they can't hear when, when Macron makes a very clear delineation between Islam, the religion, and the Islam of the Enlightenment, and then the Islam of the terrorists. It's not as if they can't hear that. They hear it and they ignore it because they don't want it. That doesn't fit their game. It doesn't fit their game. What they want to do is to increase their constituency at home and radicalize their base and grow. Well, um, to hell with these people, to hell with Erdogan. I'm delighted that Macron's removed the ambassador. I'm delighted he's calling for Turkey to, to have their, their trade arrangements with the EU uh, um, scrapped. I want to see Turkey punished for this. I'd like to see Pakistan punished for it. I don't know why the hell we give any foreign aid to a country whose leader insults our friends and allies in France. I don't want a penny to go to them. Uh, I don't want any um, country in NATO, like Turkey, that, 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 that lies as they have about France. So um, 
No, it's another one. You, you just need some more backbone. And we, we need, we, we, and, and I'd like, by the way, to see a bit of that from our Conservative Prime Minister and our Conservative government. I don't just, I don't want this, these Conservatives who think that the Conservatism is purely about saving the whale, as if, as if, as if right-wingers traditionally were just all for whale massacring, you know, <laughs> as, if, as if hitherto we, we never saw a whale we didn't want to kill. Uh, I'm not, I'm not for that. This is the easiest stuff. This is the simplest stuff. This is the kumbaya. This is the kiddie stuff. I want to see some grown-ups on the international stage, and I'm, I'm delighted we've got a bit of that from Mr. Macron. I'd like to see a bit of it more from Boris Johnson. I think we should demand more. Otherwise, I would like to see his majority eaten away at. I'd like to see him, him uh, ha having 10 points nibbled from a party further to his right, and I think he'd deserve it. 